All right, so I wanted to make one more Super Bowl 55 video. Uh, I'm going to take a break for a couple days after this, but I figured, hey, let's give Tristan Wirth some love. One of the best uh, uh, you know, seasons we, we've seen a rookie have in quite some time. Nearly, you know, you could have argued he should have been an All-Pro, and on top of this, he ends up uh, winning a Super Bowl. Doesn't get much better than that, and he was great in the Super Bowl. Although I also have a, a Mike Evans film study on this game that I'm going to post on my Patreon. Uh, you can subscribe to the Patreon, only a dollar. Uh, you get a free monthly film study, so you can check that out if you want. But yeah, anyways, back to the video. Let's talk about what Wirfs was able to do well. I think the real thing about Tristan Wirfs is just that like he's impossible to get by. I mean, there's no real move that he's bad at. He only gave up one sack all season, which is just absurd, especially for a rookie. Like on this one, 92 is going to be going up against him on this play. And what he's going to try to do is he's going to kind of try and get to the inside. And this is partially because there is a play action to the inside. But either way, that's what he's going to try and do here. Watch. Once this play starts, he is able to actually kind of get to the inside right there. And for lesser tackles, this could be some trouble. Some guys only need that first step and they're in good shape. But what's the one way you can counteract footwork it's with hands and you see the hand placement Wirfs has with his left arm getting all the way uh, to 92's right shoulder there it's just good hand placement for him and this will allow Wirfs to finish off the block it gives Brady enough time to hit Antonio Brown uh, so you know even when it's a good move he can come back we now got to talk about Frank Clark for a second Frank Clark did not have a great day against Wirfs Frank Clark ha was clearly frustrated I think at points going up against Wirfs because Wirfs was just really good so on this play, it's going to be a rushing play, and what's interesting is that, you know, this is the play that's going to start off as though it's going to be a run, kind of straight up the gut, so you think that the tackle, not too difficult of a job, uh, and for Frank Clark, he kind of just sets the edge, uh, you know, is the contain guy on this play, that's his job, just in case, you know, make sure basically that the Tampa Bay halfback, Leonard Fournette, doesn't try to break things to the outside. That's typically what Clark would want to do. Watch how once this play starts, uh, you see that, again, it's it's the hand placement. I, I swear, there's no... It seems like whatever Wirfs is trying to do, wherever he wants to get his hands, he gets his hands there. And that's kind of crazy because if you think about kind of the one uh, flaw he had in college and the one reason why I think people were a bit worried about him was kind of technique a little bit. Well, his technique clearly not a factor uh his technique is incredible because watch how he then uses his right arm to just shove Clark you know turn him all the way around get him back and it's not until defensive backs come in and make the play I mean Wirfs just completely shoved him out of the way and that's what Wirfs can do to people I don't care how good you are I don't care if you're Frank Clark who is a good player Wirfs just got the better of him to the point where later in the game you start you started to see stuff like this where guys just didn't know what to do against Tristan Wirfs they were doing whatever they can and it just wasn't working. Watch Clark. It looks like he's kind of maybe going for a speed move or something, but he just takes forever before even any slight contact is made, and Wirfs just stays with him. So that's not necessarily a great play from Wirfs, but that just goes to show that when Wirfs is beating you time after time after time, you start to just overthink things. And, you know, when you're going up against great tackles, you can't do that. You have to just continue to play your game. But again, it's easier said than done when you're trying to just think like, you're just running into a brick wall time after time. You really are. And I honestly think you can make an argument this was Worf's best game. When I'll show this one, I want, want to talk a little bit about him moving up to block linebackers. Because there's a lot of guys who can, you know, uh, do a good job at using strength to their ability. Some guys have footwork, some guys have hands, uh, and some guys have speed. But Worf's is that unique player where there is no fault in his game. There really isn't. What he's going to do on this play is get his right arm and sort of get it to the uh, linebacker's left side of his body, and he's going to try and shove him closer to the middle of the field. That's his goal on this one. Ronald Jones is running to the right, so that's what Wirfs wants to do. And, you know, this isn't necessarily the most difficult block in the world, but what's going to be impressive is how well he's going to do it. Because, yes, it is against a linebacker. You expect him to win his matchup, but you don't expect him to dominate it as much as he's going to. Watch him just shove Damian Wilson completely out of the way. Yes, that's Damian Wilson, not be, to be confused with Damian Williams, uh, but still, incredible play 
by Tristan Wirfs. That's what he does. He's great. And one final play. This is a better example of him sort of, uh, you know, just getting in position a little bit where basically the next closest guy who we could block would be 53 right there. But that's not exactly how it works. I mean, it's sort of a zone blocking scheme. So he's just going to eventually find somebody to block. It doesn't necessarily have to be him. Uh, and so first, he's got to make sure he, really that there's a clear out in between where he's going because he wants to make sure that Ronald Jones first has a gap to get past the line uh, with, you know, uh, his right guard. And then also you have the extra offensive linemen. Those are two one on one blocks. And he's just going to first make sure that that's clear. So watch how he sticks both hands out. But he notices that there is some separation and then moves up to block a linebacker. And you're just not getting through Wirfs in this moment. Uh, just, again, really well done by Tristan Wirfs. Ronald Jones is able to get to the second level. And again, uh, a, a safety is the one who it's Tyron Matthew who's helped bringing him down along with a linebacker. Anytime safeties are having to bring down someone in the running game, you know that the offensive line is doing their job. And a huge part of it was Wirfs. Uh, he was really good in both pass protection and in the running game. And he deserves uh, a ton of credit for really the season he's had. I mean, it's unfortunate that uh, he can't even get consideration for an Offensive Rookie of the Year award. And I'm not saying that. I, I think Herbert deserved it anyways because the quarterback position is so much di more difficult to transition in one year. So I think it's fine that he doesn't win it. But he should have, you know, uh, gotten a little bit more consideration and some votes, I would think, because I thought he was really good. And, you know, of course, it's tough. You're playing in a conference that had David Bakhtiari, Trent Williams, and Taron Armstead, so uh, already difficult to make one of those top three for the Pro Bowl, which is kind of why he didn't get that recognition, plus playing right tackle. They just don't get the same consideration, I feel like, even though obviously that's just as important, really, at this point. I feel like the blind side matters a little, but that, I don't think it really matters as much as people think it does. But again, that's also kind of the thing. You know, Tom Brady said, you think I do this for Pro Bowls? And Tristan Wirfs, I'm sure, is saying uh, he's totally happy with not being Offensive Rookie of the Year and winning a Super Bowl instead. I don't think he's wishing that he won Offensive Rookie of the Year and played for the Chargers this year. That's just my opinion. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, my next video will probably be a draft video of some sort. Uh, I think I might make a Zach Wilson video. I've been watching some tape on him. So, but yeah, but anyways, I'm going to take a few days, uh, you know, my mini vacation before coming back, probably just three or four days. So won't be, I'll definitely be back on Sunday for the podcast. So stay tuned then. Uh, and of course, as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>